Okay, so um, so this is a mechanism problem. We're supposed to show the mechanism yes. uh, for this reaction. For enolate chemistry, yes. So you wanted to do C. And this is from the enolate section? Yeah. Okay. So I'm assuming we're going to grab, essentially when I see that and I know we're doing enolate chemistry, we're going to grab some hydrogen next to a carbonyl, kind of like an alpha. Well, That's right. We're going to uh, grab a alpha hydrogen. That's right. Right. And All right. Good. the enol. Right. And then where I'm having trouble with all these mechanisms is seeing, well, first, which hydrogen sometimes to take. Because see, like, even there, we have two carbonyls to deal with. So do I take the one? Which hydrogen would I take? Kind of yeah. All right. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, let's look for some landmarks. It looks like you put this methyl group in as a landmark. So these two carbons must be the same because they got the methyl group. All right. Um, and also, uh, let's see, here we have uh, a ketone and an aldehyde. So um, this aldehyde here is probably this aldehyde over here. Right. So uh, let's say I would call that one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So we should immediately link the reactants to the product side. Sometimes if there are so many changes that happen, Right. We can, num we can number it like that? That's right. Well, anytime you're doing a mechanism problem, you should attempt to find corresponding atoms in the two pictures uh, by numbering. Now, you're right. Sometimes you can't really be sure of that because there's so many changes happening that you can't tell which atom is which. But you should always attempt that. Um, and in particular, again, it's important to realize that's what they want you to do. So there's usually going to be landmarks given. This methyl group was put here on purpose to help people see that this carbon is the same as this carbon. And the fact that this is an aldehyde is, again, the landmark. Um, so if you look at the landmarks, in many cases, you'll be able to do that. And we can see the number in here. It has to go 1, 2, 3, 4. It can't go 1, 2, 3, 4 because that wouldn't get there soon enough. So we can see, notice that first you might not know whether this is the number 2 carbon or this is the number 2 carbon. Uh, but if you think about it, it has to go this way because otherwise we can't get to the... You mean the one attached to the OH because it wouldn't make sense for it to be the... Yeah, so we know what we want to do is we want to be able to go, um, there should be uh, one, two carbons in between number one and number four. Okay. Um, so uh, we, uh, that would take us this way, but this is the number four. Okay. okay. So uh, let's see, does that help us uh, any more? So then I guess we could call this five. Now, like you said, I'm not 100% sure these numbers are right. Sometimes things change so much that the numbers could be wrong, but uh, this is a good step. So we could call this seven. And then we could call this 8. All right, and now I'm heartened because this number 8 has an oxygen on it, and this number 8 also has an oxygen. So that's giving me some confidence that I'm actually numbering this correctly um, over here. Where's your 7 on the left? Pardon? Sorry, where's your 7 on the left? Whoop, did I make a mistake? Let's see. Uh, 2, 5, yeah, six. I screwed up. That's okay, ahead. just 2 straight. Down. 5, 6, 7. So this should be 7. That's right. All right, and again, both sevens have an oxygen, so that bolsters our confidence that we're doing the numbering correctly. Uh, then this would be number eight over here. Okay, so I'm pretty sure we got the numbering right here. All right, so that should be a help to us. So let's see, um, now we're going to, um, so now we know we need to deprotonate somebody. We need to deprotonate an alpha carbon, right? As you were saying earlier. Sorry, at yep. eight, I think there's a double, there's a, Carbonyl there. Is that right? At eight. The oh, you're right. I didn't put that in my picture. I thought I was being so careful copying this and I still left something out. All right, but that's good because the eight has an oxygen and this eight also yeah. has an oxygen. Okay. Yeah, I always have to double check your picture. Did I leave anything else out? No, I think that's okay. Okay. Uh, so are we all on the same page? Yeah. All right. Now, you were already suggesting that we're going to use this base to deprotonate an alpha carbon. Right. So what we have to do now is uh, locate the alpha carbons that could be deprotonated. Well, here's our candidates, the number six and the number three. Those are the two candidates. You don't deprotonate double bonded uh, alpha carbons. You only deprotonate single bonded. So these are the two alpha carbons that are candidates. Mm -hmm. How can we decide which one of those to deprotonate? From the um, alpha carbon at three, that would form a five-membered ring if you create a. Okay. Okay. 
That sounds like it's, uh, that sounds like it's a sound analysis, although I, actually, that's already a little too complicated for me to follow. I, I think that's right. For me, here's the easier way to see it. Um, which, is, which of these formed a new bond in this picture, the number three or the number six? Notice that the number six over here is secondary, mm -hmm. and this number six is still secondary. So it doesn't look like the number six is really forming any new bonds. Whereas the number three here is secondary, but the number three here is tertiary. That's the easiest indication to me that it's the number three that's going to be going through the reaction. At the same time, three, so you take the hydrogen off, you're going to form the enol. You're already manipulating that aldehyde, which stays consistent on the right. Whereas it looks like that double bond O at number seven is going to switch into an OH. So why wouldn't we use six? My first intuition would be to use six. Okay, I, I think that will clarify as we continue. So let's keep going and maybe that will clarify. But the key point I wanted to make is we want to deprotonate the, the alpha carbon that looks like it's going through a reaction. Well, it doesn't look like the number six is going through any reactions okay. here. Okay. Whereas Let's the number it. three is going through a reaction because it starts secondary and ends up tertiary. So uh, I'll deprotonate the number three. So after it's deprotonated, the number three would look like this. Mm -hmm. No. That's right, right? Oh, maybe you guys would prefer to write it yeah, we like this? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, unfortunately, uh, yeah, it's true that instructors usually write it this way. Um, the way I wrote it was just a different resonance form, though, right? Um, so you'll get full credit if you write it either way, but uh, my recommendation is you'll get many more problems right if you write it with the negative charge on the alpha carbon, because who's actually going to be the nucleophile here? Three. Yeah, so it's actually leads to students to make mistakes when they put the negative charge on this oxygen. Um, so that because there's resonance, you could put the negative charge on the alpha carbon or on the carbonyl oxygen. Those would both be enolates. Um, and you can get full credit for drawing it either way. It doesn't matter which form of the resonance you draw. It's true that instructors usually put the negative charge on the oxygen, but that's because they're already good at OCHEM. For a student, it's probably better to put the negative charge on the alpha carbon because that's the carbon that's going to react. He does that O minus thing, and then he he uses it to act as a nucleophile, that double bond to open up. So in fact, he kicks the negative charge down. He puts it down, and then yeah. that and double then he bond puts the negative charge kick. Right. He's really so he's really that. showing that that double bond's opening. So I, in fact, prefer to sh like you okay. have a double bond. Yeah. That's right. Well, uh, as, I, uh, as I recall from the last Even time I said I know the idea yeah. is exactly the same. Right. Last time I said it in his class, I think he specifically said that you could draw it uh, either way. You could double check with him. Anyway, um, like I said, one thing to keep in mind is, uh, in my experience, um, Students get more questions right when they put the negative charge on the alpha carbon. But you can make your own decision. Okay. okay. So, um, all right, but uh, maybe uh, I guess. It is so. okay. Okay. So um, it doesn't really matter which way you draw it either way. This is going to be the nucleophile. That's the yeah. key idea. Okay. So, so now what? So that attacks carbon seven. Yeah. How do we know it's going to attack carbon seven? Because that's the new bond that's formed in this picture over here. Right. That's one way we know. Anyway. We know here that um, here the 3 is only bonded to the 2 and the 4, but in this picture it's bonded to the 2, the 4, and the 7. So we need the number 3 to attack the 7. Again, that's how we knew it was this alpha carbon that was going to be reacting and not the number 6, because it's this alpha carbon that has new bonds in the picture over here. So the numbering is paying off for us. But also, is it reasonable for the number 3 to attack the 7? Absolutely, because this is a carbonyl. We know that nucleophiles like to attack carbonyls. So. the number seven, we can put a negative charge uh, over here, uh, then we have number six, number five, number two, number one. This is what 
you guys are getting? Okay. And that's why I'm kind of troubled because I don't know how we're going to get rid of that double bond. Okay, yeah. That's definitely an issue. Let's make so. Y'all have the same picture now? Yeah. Okay. 